I want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace.com for sponsoring today's video. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. I've got him in sight. Am I clear for the shot? You're clear. Over. Now, nitroethane is on the DEA's list one chemical list, but it isn't illegal. It's just using, you know, a little bit of things. Though some of the most common uses of nitroethane is a solvent for artificial polymers, dissolving cyanoacrylate adhesives, and used as a reagent in various chemical syntheses. And just like nitromethane, this can be used as a fuel additive. Now, to get the nitroethane, we could either do a synthesis, or we could distill it from this product. Plasticraft has this product called Acrofix 1S0117 Pure that has nitroethane in it. It has ethyl formate with 30-60%, to and it has nitroethane with 30-60% to as well. I expect to get around 303 through 607 milliliters of ethyl formate and about 264 through 528 milliliters of nitroethane. And I could care less about whatever else I'm going to get. Speaking of things I don't want, we do not want the ethyl acetate, butanol, or the 2-phenoxyethanol. Fractionally separating this shouldn't be too hard. The only problem is the nitroethane is very close to the boiling point of butanol. The boiling points are quite close to each other, so I'm a little worried, but butin one all is only 1-5% to of the solution. To start, all I did was just pour a random amount into our round bottom boiling flask. It did start to froth a little bit when I poured it in, and that made me a little nervous for the distillation. I didn't know if this was going to work very well, so I used around 2 thirds of the bottle. God, this better work. I set it for a fractional distillation, and it was pretty much set to go. I turned on heating, and just a little bit after, you can see these really odd lines swirling around in the flask. If you don't know what it is, then likely there's two things that are going on. Number one is convection currents, and even with multiple compounds, convection currents will still be present. As the solution heats, parts of it will warm up and rise while the cooler parts sink, creating visible flow patterns or lines in the solution. The second one would be differences in the composition. So if our solution contains different compounds, which it does, with different boiling points or densities, likely we'll see lines or streaks where these components are separating, or where one component is boiling and forming bubbles while the others are not yet. Also, if I'm wrong, forget everything I said. I also put boiling stones in there, so there's a point for nucleation. As the solution heats up, our distillation is starting to happen. Luckily, no frothing started to happen, and we could proceed forward with a fractional distillation. I gotta stop you really quick, because I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, and that's Squarespace.com. The all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Honestly, I've been using Squarespace for a little bit, and it's totally a game changer for my online presence. Their templates are super flexible and customizable, so I've made my site exactly how I want it, perfect for any device. It's really user-friendly, and I can just put my most popular videos on here, and I even added a tab for education. Now you can start learning organic chemistry. Plus, with Squarespace extensions, I've easily added awesome features and connected my Instagram and my YouTube channel to it. Squarespace even offers analytics, and you can track your traffic, traffic sources, you can search for keywords, or the geography of where your visitors are from. And you can use these insights to grow your business. If you want to try this yourself, go over to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Chemdelic. All right, it's time to lock back in. Ethyl formate should be coming over first at a boiling point of 54.3 degrees Celsius. The extra surface area in a fractional distillation column significantly enhances the separation process, leading to more efficient, effective, and pure separation of the components in our solution. The ethyl formate did start coming over at its boiling point, but then the temperature kind of rose to 62-ish degrees Celsius and stayed there for a little bit. I assume what's happening is something called boiling point elevation, and that's when the boiling point of a liquid increases because something else, like salts or another solvent, is dissolved in it. 
Basically, when you mix two things together, the mixture boils at a higher temperature than the pure liquid by itself. I decided to collect everything up to about 70 to 72 degrees Celsius and then switch the flask out so we can collect the ethyl acetate. Though likely we're going to have a mixture of ethyl formate and ethyl acetate. I switched the flask out just so I could have a pretty pure product of the ethyl formate and I really don't care about this middle fraction. I'm just going to pour this back into the bottle since it's going to be a mixture of things and I'll just fractionally distill again. I decided to collect this fraction all the way up to about 112 degrees Celsius. Once it was at that temperature, I decided to switch out the flask and start collecting the nitroethane. There was a huge gap between the ethyl acetate and nitroethane boiling point, so I thought it would be okay to start at this temperature. It did rise up to about 114 to 115 degrees Celsius, and it stayed there for a while. The second this fraction hit 116 degrees Celsius was when I was going to remove the flask. Since butanone ols and nitroethane's boiling point are so similar, I wanted to minimize the amount of butanone ol that comes into the nitroethane. Now, like I said before, it is only 1-5% to of the butanone ol, but it still matters. Frothing did start to increase as the distillation was coming to an end. However, it didn't present any issues, and it stayed in the flask. Once the temperature reached 116 degrees Celsius, I switched the flask out just for a simple beaker. This should be the butanone ol, but likely there's a little bit of nitroethane in it. I'm also going to save this and put this back into the bottle. Our first fraction that we collected all the way up to 70 degrees Celsius should be our ethyl formate. Ethyl formate can be pretty useful and it has a characteristic smell of rum. The middle fraction is likely ethyl formate, ethyl acetate, and probably a little bit of nitroethane. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to pour this back in the bottle and refractionally distill. And our last fraction of nitroethane, which likely has a small impurity of butanone ol. I'm hoping that it's relatively pure and there's really not a lot in it but I would really need to run it under a GCMS or an NMR. I also weighed out how much ethyl formate I got. In the end, I got about 120.82 grams of ethyl formate. If this is pure, this would give us around 131.18 milliliters of ethyl formate. As for the nitroethane, I got 149.67 grams. This equates, if pure, to about 142.27 milliliters of nitroethane. Nitroethane is generally a hard reagent to get, and this gives a possible solution to that problem. Like I mentioned previously, I'm going to pour the middle fraction back in the bottle, as I know there's still a little bit of nitroethane in there. Now, this was a trial to see if we could actually get it from this, and it does seem to be pretty successful. However, if you know a better way, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have done this specifically, let me know exactly what temperature to collect each fraction at, and I will be very happy. And with that, have a good day, the video's done, go do something else, and I'm gonna go think about the Roman Empire.